Welcome. I'm Terry Tropin, and today I'll be describing diagnosis coding and procedural coding for pressure ulcers. This presentation will include discussions of ICD 10 CM and, and ICD 10 PCS codes. But first, let me start with information about myself. I have a master's degree in healthcare administration informatics from the University of Maryland Global Campus and have RHIA and CCSP certifications. Also, I'm an AHIMA approved ICD-10 trainer. I taught health information technology at Montgomery College in Maryland for over 20 years. I've also written books on coding. These books are study guides that summarize the coding guidelines. These books include Evaluation and Management Coding Made Easy, ICD-10 um, CM Coding Guidelines Made Easy, and ICD-10 PCS Coding Guidelines Made Easy. These books are available on Amazon and updated every year or as needed. So this is an overview of what I'm going to talk about during this presentation discuss overview of pressure ulcer codes, the kind of format framework of the codes, stages of pressure ulcers, diagnosis coding guidelines, and then I'll go into PCS codes for treatment for pressure ulcers, including what body systems might be involved, what guidelines apply, non-surgical treatments, and surgical treatments. And finally, since these guidelines are kind of confusing, as are most, I'll talk about things you can write in your CM and your PCS book to help you remember all of this. So pressure ulcers. Pressure ulcers are found in category L89. A pressure ulcer is an inflammation sore or open lesion in the skin over a bony prominence, like an elbow or a knee or a heel. Um, the picture here shows some of the most common sites. Now, who gets pressure ulcers? Well, pressure ulcers happen to people who are overweight, or obese, elderly, patients suffering from chronic diseases or injuries. So people who are in bed a lot so that there's a lot of pressure on that bony prominence. And if the patient is not turned, doesn't move, if they're staying in one place all the time, they are more likely to get a pressure ulcer. So what else do you call pressure ulcers? Well, pressure ulcers are also referred to as bed sores, decubitus ulcers, plaster ulcers, pressure area, or pressure sore. All means the same thing. And you can see here, he's a little bit more um, direct on where they're located, the more inf <clears throat> information on where they're located. The patient is lying on their back for too long. They'll come here, lying on their side lying face down, this is where they might get a pressure ulcer. Any place where they um, stay immobile for too long. <clears throat> now the first thing to note is a pressure ulcer, under the pressure ulcer category L89, is an excludes two note. Remember that excludes two notes means that when appropriate, you can list two codes. So the pressure ulcers may be, codes may be listed with um, decubitus ulcers of the cervix, N86, diabetic ulcers, and in this case, you use a fourth and fifth digit 6-2, which is for other specified diabetes with skin complications. So this is for codes E8, E9, E11, and E13. <clears throat> now, pressure ulcer might occur with a non-pressure chronic ulcer, and that's coded to L97, skin infections, and varicose ulcers. So these are excludes too. So if the documentation has one of these codes and an ulcer, a pressure ulcer, you code for both. It all depends on the documentation. So let's look at the makeup of uh, category L89. The codes include a fourth digits for the general location, such as pressure ulcer of back, L89.1. Then the fifth digit gets more specific, such as pressure ulcer of the upper back, 
L89.11. The six digits may be more specific and also indicate the stage of the ulcer, such as pressure ulcer of right upper back stage two, which is L89.112. So each digit is adding more information. So the sixth or sometimes, <clears throat> usually it's the sixth digit, but sometimes it's the final digit, is the stage of the ulcer. So final digit zero is unstageable, and we'll define that in a minute. Final digit one, stage one, final digit two, stage two, final digit three, stage three, final digit four, stage four. Final digit six is deep tissue damage. Final digit nine is unspecified, and I'll talk a little bit more about those. Okay, so here's a presentation showing the um, different stage, some of the different stages of ulcers. So we have stage one, skin is kind of red. Stage two, you start to get blisters. Stage three, you have actual damage to the skin. <clears throat> and stage four, you have tissue loss and often uh, life-threatening infections. So let's talk about some of the definitions of the stage, stages. So deep tissue damage, persistent, meaning lasting, non-blanchable, deep red, purple, or maroon areas of intact skin, non-intact skin, or blood-filled blisters. Final digit six, deep tissue damage. Unstageable means the stage cannot be clinically determined. The physician or provider can't see what stage it is. Why would this happen? Well, the ulcer is covered by escar scabbing, or uh, it's been already been treated with a skin graft, a muscle graft, a transfer graft, and so they can't see the level of the ulcer. So that's unstageable. Unspecified is there's no documentation as to the stage of the ulcer, and that's a final digit nine. So deep tissue is digit six, final digit. Unstageable is um, digit zero. Unspecified is digit nine. Now make sure and re, uh, differentiate between unspecified and uh, unstageable. A lot of uh, people get those confused. Unspecified means there's no documentation. Okay. Unstageable means that they, the physician can, documents they cannot see the stage of the ulcer. So they, they, that's what's documented. They can't clinically determine the uh, um, stage. Unspecified means the physician or provider didn't document, didn't write down what the stage was. So unstageable and unspecified are different. So there are some notes and guidelines for pressure ulcer, under pressure ulcer diagnosis codes. First, under category 89 is the note, code first any associated gangrene. I-96.6, so this is I-96. So this is gangrene, of course, is death of tissue. So code first, the I-96, and then you code the pressure ulcer. So also more guidelines. If during the encounter, um, the stage of an unstageable pressure ulcer, remember the one that's covered by um, um, scabbing or um, skin uh, graft or transfer. If there's a debridement of, this would usually be with ESCAR, um, <clears throat> and then the physician can determine, oh, it's a stage whatever, after removing, after debridement of the tissue. If that happens, use the code for this, whatever stage was revealed after debridement. You're not going, it started out as unstageable and now it's um, stageable. So use this, the stage that's been revealed. Another guideline relates to pressure ulcers that are in the process of healing. So they're, they're getting better. The guideline state, you should list a code for the stage the ulcer is at the time the patient is seen. But there's an exception. If a patient is admitted with an ulcer at one stage and it gets worse during the hospital stage, list two codes. You list one code for the stage it was at admission, and then you do another code for the highest stage during hospitalization. This is important because if it gets worse while they're in the hospital, that could indicate some lack of care, and that's an important consideration. 
Um, so I'll list one code for the stage admission, another at the highest stage during the hospitalization. That's healing, changing. Healed, on the other hand, means that they had a pressure ulcer, but now it is healed, completely healed. So keeps clear in your mind the difference between healing and healed. So if it's healed, do not list a code if the documentation states the ulcer is completely healed at the time of admission. So you might do a history of pressure ulcers, but if it's um, healed, then there's no reason to, it's not going to get any uh, treatment. It may look to see how it's doing, whether it's reoccurred, but they're not, you're not going to um, treat it. But there's an exception to this rule. If a patient has a pressure ulcer at admission, but it's healed at the time of discharge, assign a code for the site and stage of pressure ulcer at the time of admission. So if they had one when they were admitted, but while they were in there, it is healed, you're still going to code for it because you know it did get some treatment um, while they were there and now it's healed, which is great, but there was something done to the pressure ulcer while the patient was in the hospital. So if you look in the index, there'll be a lot of different, you look up ulcer, there are other codes for ulcers other than pressure ulcers. So don't get pressure ulcers, L89, confused with other kinds of skin ulcers. There's non-pressure chronic ulcers of the lower limb, that's L97 and L98.4, and this is a skin lesion due to poor circulation, poor blood flow. You also have diabetic ulcers, which E08, E11, and E13, and note that um, we talked before that about the excludes note, two note, it's diabetic ulcers and pressure ulcers, but a diabetic ulcer is not the same as a pressure ulcer. So be careful to um, keep these differentiated in your mind. It can be confusing. Okay, so let's look at ICD-10 PCS codes for treatment of pressure ulcers. I'll discuss non-surgical treatments and surgical treatments. And if you need to review PCS coding, I have videos on each character on this channel that you can uh, take a look. So non-surgical treatments we're going to talk about is irrigation, pressure dressing, pass, packing, negative wound pressure, and hyperbaric oxygenation. For surgical treatments, we're going to use, we're going to talk about non-excisional debridement, excisional debridement, skin graft, and transfer. Now, there may be other treatments, but these are the most common. Okay, let's start with irrigation. Um, first, we're going to look at the non-surgical treatments, and we're going to start with irrigation. The wound just may be need, just may need to be irrigated or washed out with a cleansing substance. This code is in the administration section of PCS. Three for administration. E second next digit is a E physiological systems and anatomic regions. One is irrigation zero skin and mucous membranes, and then the rest of the, the codes that you will need. So 3E10 for irrigation, just rinsing out the wound with a cleaning, like an antibiotic substance. Dressing is in the placement set section. Dressing is covering an area to protect it while the pressure ulcer is healing. So this is just protecting it from uh, bacteria or um, um, anything else. So it's in the placement section, so it's two placement W anatomical regions to dressing. That's pretty straightforward. So then we get to pressure dressing. This is application of uh, pressure to a particular body part. Usually it's done with no adhe um, adhesive. You can see in the picture, it's kind of a wrapping of uh, the area. Uh, usually applied over a wound that has already been covered with an absorbent layer. So why do they do pressure ulcer, pressure dressing to control bleeding, protect the wound, prevent heat and fluid loss? This is also in the placement area uh, section, W anatomic regions, one compression, and then the other appropriate digits. 
Another common treatment, non-surgical, is packing. This is placing material in a wound to absorb fluids. Um, this is also in the placement section, anatomical regions, W for packing. Okay, so these all sound really similar so when you look at the definitions. So let's talk about what are the differences. Compression applies pressure to the wound while jet dressing just protects it. So you can see pressure protection. Dressing puts material on a region while packing puts material in an area. So these, the wording of these is very similar, so I wanted to talk about how they are different. Negative wound pressure is a procedure to draw out the fluids and infection from a wound. This involves a vacuum pump, so it's more than just pressure. So you can see from the picture, it's sucking out some of the fluid, to draw out fluid and infection from a wound. A special dressing is sealed over the wound and gentle vacuum pump is attached. Now this, surprisingly, is in the physiological rehabilitation and diagnostic audiology section, F. So it's F085B. So you have physiological rehabilitation and diagnostic audiology, rehabilitation, activities of daily living, wound management, physical agent, so FO8. Hyperbaric oxygenation is done to um, help severe non-healing wounds heal better. So this is when a patient is enclosed in a chamber and breathes in 100% oxygen, and this promotes healing. And this is in the extracorporeal our systemic assistance and performance section, physiological systems, systems, intermittent or continuous, and this is either FAO5, FA05221 or FA05121. So it's, this digit is different whether it's um, intermittent or continuous. Okay, so let's go on to the surgical treatments. These are in the medical and surgical section, of course. So the first digit is zero. And you have what body systems are you going to find these in? Well, H or J. So in most cases, we're going to talk about some other systems also. So if it involves the epidermis and the dermis, use it from the skin and breast system. If it's below the dermis, here, so cutaneous fat and tissues, but not any deeper than it's in the skin and subcutaneous tissue system, J. Unfortunately, sometimes if a patient's uh, wounds have not been, if they haven't found, didn't find the um, pressure ulcer fairly quickly, it may go deeper down to the muscle or even the bone. In the muscle, it's body system K. And if it's the bone, it's um, N through Q. Now, if a deeper level is excised below the skin, below the subcutaneous tissue, you're going to use the body system for the deeper level, not the skin or subcutaneous tissue. So the deepest level that the uh, pressure ulcer goes to. Now, the guidelines clarify coding for coding conditions of the skin, subcutaneous, subcutaneous tissue, and fascia over a joint. So this only applies to skin and subcutaneous tissue. And these are like bony prominences that we talked about is where pressure ulcers uh, form. So this is important. So if it says shoulder, use upper arm, the digit for upper arm. If it's elbow, use lower arm. If it's the wrist, use lower arm. If it's the hip, use upper leg. If it's the knee, use lower leg. And if it's the ankle, use foot. Now, there are also guidelines for um, right, left, upper, lower values, but, but no bilateral. So 
Many of the body systems for procedures involving pressure ulcers have uh, different values for right and left, upper and lower, but no values for bilateral. So if a patient has uh, pressure ulcers in their right hip and their left hip, right buttock and left buttock, right heel, left heel, there's no digits for these. So what you do is if there's bilateral procedures with values for right and values for left, you're going to report two, two different codes. One code with the value for right, one code with the value for left, or upper, lower, or whatever it is. So um, skin and breast, H, has right and left, no values for bilateral. Subcutaneous skin and fascia have right, left, and upper, lower, but no values for bilateral. Muscles, left, right, bones, right, left, upper, lower, no values for bilateral. So if it's bilateral, you're going to use, have to use two different codes. So the first surgical procedure I'll discuss is debridement. If you look in the index, you find debridement, excisional, see excision, non-excisional, see extraction. So excision is defined as cutting out or off without replacement a portion of a body part. Extraction is pulling or stripping out or off all of a portion of a body part by the use of force. So let's start with non-excisional debridement. So this is code, coded using extraction. This is considered non-surgical. The tissue is, tissue is removed, but it's removed by brushing, irrigation, scrubbing, washing, that kind of thing. So if extraction includes removing some tissue, even if it's just a little, you're going to use extraction. If the tissue is not removed, it's, um, you're going to code for irrigation. Um, when we talked about before, it's the 3E10 the e, e codes. So it all matters whether any tissue is removed, whether it's irrigation or non-excisional debridement. So excisional debridement, I tried not to have gross um, pictures in this, but this is pretty much the only thing I could find. Um, excisional debridement is surgical removal or cutting away of devitalized tissue, ne necrotic tissue, or sloth. Cutting away of skin must be documented. Now, this doesn't include scissoring of loose fragments. This is not coded as excisional. Um, use of a laser to remove tissue is coded as excisional. So you're going to use the root operation excision. The guidelines state, however, that debridement performed to prepare skin for further surgery is not coded separately. That's all part of the uh, whatever surgery is being done. And remember, use the body system for the deepest layer being treated. If it's the skin, subcutaneous tissue, or below that, muscle or bone. So here's an example. Percutaneous excisional debridement of skin, subcutaneous tissue, and muscle of both hips. So we're going to use a code for muscle because that's the deepest tissue. So you're going to use 0KB and 3ZZ for the right and 0KP3ZZ for the left hip. Okay, so it's both hips. Um, so the body system is K for muscle, excision, hip, percutaneous, and then no device, no qualifier. And this again is the body system character for the deepest level, and then two codes, one for right, one for left. The next procedure I'm going to talk about is transfer. This is defined as moving without taking out all or a portion of a body part to another location to take over the function of all or a portion of a body part. So that's kind of confusing, but you can see on this what they did. They took this from here, this tissue, and moved it over here, but it's still connected. To the original site. So, and then they stitch up the site where it's moved from and the sites where it's moved 
2. Now replacement is defined as uh, putting in or on biological or synthetic material that physically takes the place and or function of all or a portion of the body part. So it, this is a little bit different. This is, they take it from one area, they completely remove it, and they move it to another area. This is a graft. So when is it a transfer and when is it a replacement? This is very confusing. So transfer is moving without taking out all or a portion of a body part to another location to take over the function of all or a portion of a body part. So the body part being moved remains connected to its original body, some, some of its original blood vessels and nerves, okay? So it's not completely removed, lifted, and moved someplace else. So if it says it's a pedicle graft, that's what it means, okay? Replacement on the, under, on the other hand, um, putting in or on biological or synthetic material that physically takes the place and or function of all or a portion of the body part. In this case, the body part is completely removed from its original site. So that's the difference between transfer, which is X, and replacement, which is R. So ask yourself, in deciding between these two, whether any of the tissue remains connected to its, to its original site. Yes, it's just a little corner. So if the answer is yes, then use transfer. If the answer is no, then use replacement. Okay, so let's talk about transfer procedures. Pedicle grafts or flaps are coded as transfers. So the tissue is moved but not completely detached from its original place. Transfer procedures are used in skin and breast, subcutaneous tissue, muscles, tendons, and bursa and ligaments. Transfer procedures are tricky. The tricky digit is digit seven, the qualifier um, digit, the qualifier value. The root operation is transfer X. The body part is the deepest tissue involved, skin, subcutaneous muscle, bone, and the qualifier value is the intervening areas. The layers cut through in order to get to the deepest, deepest issue. So it could be skin and subcutaneous tissue B, skin, subcutaneous tissue, and fascia, so it's a little bit deeper, C, um, or there's no qualifier. That would be a Z. There are other qualifier values here, but probably wouldn't be used for pressure ulcers. So here's an example. Open pedicle facial graft on patient's left buttock involving skin and subcutaneous tissue. This is treatment of a pressure ulcer. So you have medical and surgical, zero, subcutaneous tissue and fascia, J, X transfer, nine subcutaneous tissue and fascia buttock, which is the deepest level going down to the sub, through the skin to get to the uh, subcutaneous tissue and fascia. Open approach, no device. And what did they go through to get to the fascia? They went through the skin and subcutaneous tissue. So the code is 0JX90ZB. So replacement procedures are also tricky. The tricky digit is digit seven in this case, the device value. So replacement procedures, which coded with R, are found in skin and breast, subcutaneous tissue, muscles, tendons, bursa, and ligaments, head and facial bones, upper bones, lower bones, lower joints, lower joint, upper joints, lower joints. And we note also, this is important, if harvesting of the graft is done at the same session from a different site, different incision is necessary, the harvesting or the obtaining of the graft uh, can be coded separately. So the device value seven has, um, six, has these options. So it's autologous tissue substitute is a seven tissue from the patient. 
synthetic tissue six from the man-made material, non-ontologous non tissue substitute K, living tissue from another person or a cadaver. So that seems pretty straightforward, but actually it's not. So let's see the guidelines for this. There are guidelines for this um, device value six that uh, you need to remember. Living or biological material was used, use device value non-autologous tissue substitute K. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. But if the material used in the replacement is a mixture of living or biological material and synthetic material, it says to use non-autologous tissue K again. If there's two different types of material used, code each type separately. If there's artificial tissue, artificial skin or prosthetic implant, use device value synthetic substitute J. So this is something you might want to write in your book because it's confusing. So here's an example. Patient presents for full thickness skin graft from the, ab from the abdomen to the left thigh external approach. So they took tissue from the um, uh, abdomen and put it to cover and pressure ulcer in the left thigh. Okay, so first we're gonna code for obtaining the graft. So this is uh, skin and breast, um, excision B, skin from the abdomen, external approach, device qualifier. So the complete code is 0HB7XEZ. Okay, now we're going to, we've harvested the graft and now it's going to be placed on the left thigh. So again, this is skin and breast replacement this time. The, getting the graft was uh, an excision, upper left leg, external, autologous tissue because it's the patient's own tissue, full thickness graft. So the code is 0HRJX73. Okay, wow, a lot of guidelines, a lot of stuff in here like there are in most of these. So here are some suggestions of notes to write in your books to help you remember the guidelines. So let's start with notes you put in your um, ICD-10-CM book. So in your book, circle the guidelines for pressure ulcers. In the alphabetic index, find ulcer and then find the subterm pressure underline that because there's a lot, there's a couple of pages worth of other kind of ulcers and we talked about those. We want pressure ulcers, so underline pressure so your eye goes directly to that. Now in the tabular list, uh, you might write in definitions that you think you'll um, might be unclear, you might not remember. So write in the definition of deep tissue damage, unstable, unstageable and unspecified. You want to keep separate the difference between unstageable and unspecified. You might want to write in the difference between healed and healing and the different guidelines for that. Under category L89, circle the excludes to note for diabetic ulcer, meaning that a diabetic ulcer and the pressure ulcer may both be present and you can, um, even the same skin area, and you can code for both. And under category E08, E13, write in excludes two note pressure ulcer, excludes two pressure ulcer. So write that in there. So if you look up the, the um, uh, diabetic, you can see, oh yeah, and you can do a pressure ulcer. If you write, look up di, um, pressure ulcer, it says, oh yeah, you can write in, you can also code the diabetic ulcer. Okay, in your PCS book, there's some guidelines too. Look at the guideline, um, B4.6, which gives you that shoulder equals upper, upper arm, hip equals upper leg, that kind of thing, so that you can remember those and find those easily. I found negative wound pressure and hyperbaric um, treatment very hard to find. I looked up negative, I looked up wound, I looked up pressure, couldn't find it. So my suggestion is go in the index and write in a main term wound and then do negative wound pressure, F08, hyperbaric, 5A0, okay? 
And you might also, in the index, write in the main term flap and refer to transfer. Okay. In the body system sections for replacements, you might write in the definitions of the device values we talked about. Mix of living and synthetic material, use character K, for example. Okay, that completes this video. If you have comments or questions, please feel free to contact me. I am at, um, I am right here. Terry Trobin at um, gmail.com. Uh, if you'd like to purchase a copy of these slides, please contact me at this email and also take a look at my books, Evaluation and Management, CM and PCS. These are all on Amazon. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.